Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by contributions from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor in support of the televised Daily Mass. And the second is Eveline McNeil from Morrisburg, Ontario, in thanksgiving for the blessing of her father, Robert Haskins, who died on January the 4th. Mr. Haskins would have celebrated his 105th birthday on Monday. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We celebrate the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated for us at the right hand of God to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, a Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you taught the whole world through the preaching of the blessed Apostle Paul. Draw us nearer to you through the example of him whose conversion we celebrate today, and so make us witnesses to your truth in the world, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul spoke to the people in Jerusalem. I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, educated strictly according to our ancestral law, being zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way up to the point of death by binding both men and women and putting them in prison as the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify about me. From them, I also receive letters to the brothers in Damascus, and I went there in order to bind those who were there and to bring them back to Jerusalem for punishment. While I was on my way and approaching Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone about me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? Then he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not hear the voice of the one who I was speaking to. I asked, What can I do, Lord? The Lord said to me, Get up 
and go to Damascus. There you will be told everything that has been assigned to you to do. Since I could not see because of the, bright, the brightness of the, that light, those who were with me took my hand and led me to Damascus. A certain Ananias, who was a devout man according to the law and well spoken of by all the Jews living there, came to me and standing beside me, he said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. In that very hour, I regained my sight and saw him. Then Ananias said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear his own voice. For you will be his witness to all the world of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you delay? Get up, be baptized, and have your sins washed away, calling on his name. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the eleven, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
go out to all the world and tell the good news. St. Paul, love him or not, he's a polarizing figure. An Israeli, well, Jesus too was an Israeli. Paul was well-educated. He spoke Hebrew and Greek. He wrote or dictated his letters in Greek. Born in Tarsus in Turkey, he was a Roman citizen. He never knew Jesus personally. He had never met him. And today, then, we hear how he becomes from a persecutor of the followers of Jesus to a proclaimer of this Jesus as the Messiah. He became the outstanding Christian missionary, an apostle to the Gentiles, as he described himself, a foreign missionary, if you like, bringing the gospel, the good news of Jesus, to the eastern part of the Roman Empire through his travels and speeches in, in various synagogues and uh, through the many letters he dictated to the small Christian groups he had founded in Turkey and Greece and eventually in Rome, where he spent a lot of time under house arrest. Today we hear of his conversion from Judaism to Christianity. A sort of a, a 360 degree turnaround from persecutor of Christians to the greatest promoter of Christianity. From Luke, we get the uh, now famous dialogue between the risen Christ and this persecutor of Christians. Let's just hear it again. A great light from heaven suddenly shone about me. I fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Interesting that Paul's first question was, who are you, Lord? Maybe it's an opportunity for us to uh, stop for a moment and ask ourselves, who is Jesus for me? Who are you in my life, Lord? Well, we know the, who Jesus was. The man who was born in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth, left home, preached a few years about God and life, healed some people, put together a small group of followers, ordinary people, fishermen, a tax collector, none of them well known. He disturbed uh, the religious leaders of his time, they had him arrested and eventually sentenced to death by Pilate, the Roman official. Jesus of Nazareth, that's who I am, he said. Son of Mary, son of Joseph, the village handyman, also son of God. The question, though, to me, who is he for me? Who is he in my life? I am a Christian, a follower of Jesus the Christ. And then Paul's second question, what am I to do, Lord? The answer he got was, get up, go to Damascus, where you were going, and there you will be told everything that has been assigned to you to do. So same question to you and me. What am I to do at this time in my life where I find myself? Maybe, like me, you're not as nearly as active as you used to be. Maybe the answer will not come as soon as 
the answer came to Paul. But the courage to ask the question may be important. It's a sort of an opening of ourselves to God at this time in our lives, wherever we are. What am I to do, Lord? And uh, Paul was told, well, go where you were going and you'll find out what I want you to do. Then and now, the uh, Christian tribes and tongues and nations eventually spread throughout the world. Then and now, we as Christians are called to proclaim the good news, the story of Jesus of Nazareth. Not only to proclaim it, but to live by it, to make his story, our story. For all who have suffered, for all who have died in Lille in Quebec because of the tremendous fire there, for the dead and their relatives and families, we pray to the Lord. For missionaries who, like St. Paul, go overseas to proclaim the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick, the shut-in, those who live alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have lost a, a close friend, a family member, we pray to the Lord. For our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Risen Lord, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as in heaven. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Spirit fill us with that light of faith with which he constantly enlightened St. Paul for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the peace of the Lord.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity with which St. Paul the Apostle burned ardently as he bore his concern for all the churches through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to two donors. The first, an anonymous donor. The second is Rise Eveline from McNeil from Morrisburg, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coote, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass. Our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again. Come on.